Turtle Beach is no stranger to gaming peripherals and even sim equipment with a variety of flight accessories, but now with the Velocity One Race Bundle, it's jumping into the racing world. Coming in at $650, Velocity One Race works on PC and Xbox and comes with everything necessary to hit the track, including a direct drive wheelbase, a wheel with paddle shifters, pedals with a load cell brake, and even a button box. But with more competition than ever on the market when it comes to sim racing, can this stand out? Well. Let's dive in and check it out. Hey everybody, I'm Jordan with 9to5Toys. Today we're checking out the Turtle Beach Velocity One Race. And first off, thanks to Turtle Beach for sending this over. They did send one out to us, but this is not sponsored and they have no say in what I say about this unit, which I think will be very clear in this video. So strap in, grab your favorite drink racers, because this is gonna be a little bit of a longer video, as there are quite a few things to talk about in this entire sim racing bundle. Of course, there will be links in the description if you wanna pick one of these up for yourself, and also timestamps in this video if you wanna check out a specific piece, but I I encourage you to watch each section or as much as you're able to because there are pros and cons to each piece of this entire bundle. All right, so getting started here, the Velocity One Race Bundle is a complete package. Everything that you need either at your Xbox or at a PC, whether you're racing at a table with a clamp and on carpet, or if you have a dedicated sim rig. The wheelbase is direct drive, which of course is one of the more premium features of sim racing hardware. And the pedals include a load cell brake, which is also another premium feature here. Additionally, the digital dash up here, the RMD screen as Turtle Beach is calling it, is pretty unique for the sim racing world for something actually built into a bundle. Same as with the button box over here. These are things that are usually upgrades with other bundles. You know, they're not completely new to the sim racing market, but you usually don't see them in a bundle like this. And coming from a big brand like Turtle Beach, you can expect to be able to find this in bigger stores like Best Buy pretty easily. So it will be one that you can, you know, be shopping at a store and see on the shelf and pick up, which is also something that sets it apart from some of the competition like Fanatec and Moza, even though Moza is starting to make a little bit more of a place for itself in some stores. So at $650, Velocity One Race isn't the most affordable direct drive bundle. Moza has a few offerings with the $460 R5 and soon to be available $400 R3, which will also work on Xbox. Both Moza bundles though only come with a two pedal system and that does not include a load cell brake. So we'll get the wheel out of the way here and first up we're going to talk about the wheelbase. Now it is, you know, compared to some of the Moza wheelbases, this thing is pretty massive. It's at least on par with the Logitech Pro wheel, if not a little bit bigger. It's wide, it's deep, and there's a lot going on here because it is direct drive, but also has this display built in on top. And after knowing that this is direct drive, usually the next question is how powerful is it? Which is one of the you know most common questions and most sought after specs when it comes to sim racing gear. And the Velocity One Race is coming in at 7.2 peak Newton meters of force, which is commendable. For comparison, the ever popular Logitech G923 is coming in at about 2.3 Newton meters of torque. So this is quite a bit more than that. And those entry level bundles from Moza, the R3 and the R5, their names reflect how much force they put off. So the R3 I think is actually like four Newton meters and then the R5 is five Newton meters. So this beats both of those when it comes to just raw power, how much force it can put out. Taking a look at the overall construction though, you know, it is big and it's plasticky. It has some lines on here that I'm sure are made to kind of mimic cockpits that you would find in an actual car. Looking at the design, you can see we do have some buttons on here on front. They kind of get hidden behind the wheel and are a little bit harder to press. We have the Xbox button, menu, share, and view. Over on the right side, there is a headphone microphone jack, a power button, and a K drive. And in the back, there are three USB-C ports. Two are labeled as expansion ports. One is the cable that you use to connect into your PC or Xbox. And then there is a power plug. And then additionally on the other side is one more USB-C expansion port. So while there aren't any accessories available right now, Turtle Beach has set this up to be able to accept a lot of accessories. So hopefully we'll see things like handbrake, shifter, and you know other options to build out this ecosystem a little bit that Turtle Beach is brand new to. Couple other neat design features. There are these doors on the side that house the bolts for the clamp that holds this to a desk. And the kind of the coolest feature about that is actually over here on the other side, 
They even have the little hex key that's used to tighten those down stored here under this door. So it's always available, easy to find, probably one of the best features there. So because of that, mounting the wheelbase to a desk is very simple. You can use this hex key, loosen the two bolts here, tighten them back up, and it felt very secure once I had it tightened down. Unfortunately, on my unit, it seems like one of the bolts is cross-threaded. Immediately after trying to loosen it here so that I could put it on a clamp, it was very difficult to move, and it's I've loosened it and tightened it a couple of times, clamping it on the desk, and it hasn't loosened up at all through that. It's always been very hard to move up and down, which the other one moves very freely, so that's what's, you know, kind of indicating that something is wrong there. I expect that they should be moving freely. I don't think I've seen any other reviews that mention this, so it might just be something with my unit, but definitely something I wanted to point out. So out of the box, it's ready to go at a desk if you want to use it that way. But if you're using it at a cockpit, which is a, a better, much better experience in my opinion, uh, there are three bolt holes down here and this pattern lines up perfectly with like the Logitech Pro Wheel. So I use this on the Placey Trophy Logitech G Edition. You can see that review up here in the corner if you wanna check that out. And it was very simple, very easy to get mounted on there. And the last little bit we'll talk about here, you can see I have the button box on the right side, but that can also be mounted to the left side. It comes detached and then there are just two bolts that go in here. Very easy to connect, but we'll talk a little bit more about that a little bit further on. All right, now we're gonna talk about, I think one of the standout features here, and that is the RMD or race management display. That is the screen up here. Other wheelbases like the Logitech Pro Wheel have smaller displays that allow you to make some adjustments to different features. But this one is large, has a lot of information, and basically you can control everything that's available in the desktop app, you can also control on the wheelbase here, which I think is pretty powerful. You know, considering that this also just hooks up to an Xbox, having all that built into the wheelbase is a really nice feature. And beyond changing all of the features and all the you know settings on here, it also works as a live digital dash. So it'll give you gears, RPM, even your Delta with compatible racing titles. And while that list of compatible titles doesn't include anything on the Xbox at the moment, my contact has said that they are working on that and that's supposed to be coming out in an update. I did get it to work on PC in both ACC and Forza Motorsport, although it does take another third-party app to get it to work over there. So I had to download SimHub, which is very easy to download and set up and use, has some quick tools on how to get everything set up, and it was pretty quick to get up and running on here. One nice thing about that live display is that on Forza Motorsport, at least, how I have it set up. I don't know if there's a setting for that, but you don't always see your lap delta constantly during your lap. It only pops up at certain moments after certain corners. One nice thing about the display is that it's always on down there. So you can always see your delta whenever you wanna get a little peek about how you're doing compared to your previous laps. One other feature that's really neat with RMD and it's built into the wheelbase is we mentioned that there is a headphone uh, headset jack on the right side and there are audio controls built in here. So you can change the EQ, you can change your mic monitoring, you can change the volume, your chat mix. And so lots of powerful things built right into here. Very easy to control, so you don't need you know, a separate wireless headset. You can plug it and run it directly through here, which is a pretty good feature, I think, especially on Xbox and being able to make some adjustments there. It even includes their superhuman hearing mode, which is you know, usually beneficial for more competitive FPS games, uh, but they also have it built into this if you wanna use that mode. Now let's chat a little bit about the wheel. It's relatively light, you know, for everything that it has on here. I do think that maybe like the ES wheel from Moza is a little bit lighter, but overall, this is really light for a 300 millimeter wheel. You can see that it is the D shape, so it has the flat side down here. I would prefer to have a round wheel to make it more universal and more compatible with like rally games and drifting, but this seems to be the standard that you get on most wheels and most bundles these days. But because it is removable, you know, hopefully we see some new options from Turtle Beach here pretty soon with maybe a formula wheel or a GT wheel and something round for drifting and rally as well. So there is a little snap ring collar here. You have to pull back to actually mount it on and you just get it lined up. It mounts very easy, very easy to take off as well. For the most part, the materials on here feel pretty high quality. The actual like gripping points is a nice material. It definitely feels better than something like the Moza ES wheel, but uh, when it comes to some other things like the buttons and controls, they aren't the highest quality. And one thing that I've noticed 
is that a lot of these buttons are very small and very close together. So when I am racing with gloves, I found that I have to be you know, a little bit more precise, a little bit more careful when I am pushing these buttons because it can be easier to kind of fat feed or something and push a button that I didn't intend to push. And all the controls you would expect to find are on here. You know, A, B, X, Y, you have your R, T, L, T. There's a little four-way thumbstick down here. There are two rotary dials, which the one on the right side basically just controls the RMD. So this will call up the menu so you can make changes. There is select and back. Over here on the other side, things are mappable. There are two little, they look like dials on top, but when you push it, it goes back. And so I would set this to, you know, ABS up and down in ACC and traction control up and down in ACC. So I could, you know, push it one way to make it increase and push it the other way to decrease. Um, it's an interesting feature, you know, I maybe would have seen a little bit more functionality in that if it was just a rotary that you could constantly move to increase or go down, but it's nice to have a few different options there. On the back, we obviously have the paddles and they are magnetic, which feels nice and they're not very loud compared to some other wheels that I've used. Uh, mainly I'm thinking about some of the Mozo wheels and the uh, Logitech Pro wheel. It does have, you know, it's pretty light to actuate, which I also think makes it not so loud. But then once you actuate it, it does have some flex beyond that. It hasn't been that big of an issue to me. Maybe it makes it feel a little bit less premium, but something to note there. And then you do have your secondary paddles down here, which can be mapped to a couple different things, I think, but not very much. It's pretty much just like a clutch action. So this is just a smooth paddle action uh, that you can change in the software. And on the back of the wheel here, kind of behind the paddles, there's an LSB and RSB. So two more buttons hidden back here if you want to map those to something like flashing your headlights or you know something else that you would usually use in some of your games. And other key Xbox uh, controls are you know your Xbox button, your menu view and share, which are over here on the wheelbase. Those can be mapped to the button box if you wanna make those a little bit more accessible because basically I, I had a very hard time hitting those when I was actually racing. So I ended up mapping them over here. So I mentioned it briefly, but I wanna talk more about this quick release and the interaction and how it actually works when you are racing because there seems to be some sort of slop or something loose once you have this on here. I don't think it's in the wheel. It seems like there's something else in the actual shaft here in the drive that's making a very audible, very loud, very distracting noise when I basically if I ever go off the track or if there are really quick movements on the wheel, if there's like a snap oversteer or something like that, I'll hear a loud clunk and going off track and going over grass, hitting some rough curbs, you know, it almost turns into more of like this really loud rattle. You know, that's something that we had issues with, you know, with the Logitech G923, the True Force, the vibration would get very loud. And basically if, you know, racing at night and you're worried about being too loud and waking people up, that's a wheel that a lot of people don't recommend because of that. And typically with other direct drive wheels, they are completely silent, which is a huge benefit. But something's going on here where there's a weird rattle. One thing to note here is that I don't think that this is an every unit type of issue because there are some other very well-known reviewers who have not mentioned this at all. And it is very noticeable in my testing. So I would think that if there was an issue that would be called out very quickly. So this might be another quality control issue, you know, just like the threaded bolt over on the clamp. So that's very disappointing to see in here you know even when I was racing with friends and some different titles if it started making loud noise I would mute my microphone because I didn't want to be you know too distracting or having this loud noise coming through over the mic so definitely something that I noticed on my unit so well it doesn't necessarily affect my racing I don't think that it you know uh, made me go off track or do anything like that. I also don't want to see that from a brand new $650 direct drive wheelbase. I, I don't think it should be operating like that. All right, so that's the wheel and the wheelbase. Now let's talk about the pedals. You know, just as important as the wheel and wheelbase, if not maybe a little bit more important, 
are the pedals, you know, being able to trail break, being able to, you know, consistently hit a threshold and trail break off of that is I think where a lot of people are going to find more time in their laps. And Turtle Beach has gone for some more premium technology with the load cell brake pedal. So what that means is that it measures the force that's being applied rather than, you know, the distance that the pedal is traveling, which is what you would find in budget pedals like those from Moza, from Logitech with the G923, and even Thrustmaster with the T300 RS GT. The Velocity One race brake pedal can detect up to 50 kilograms of force, which is impressive for a pedal setup that can be placed on carpet as well as mounted on a rig. And as you can see, it does come with the three pedals. So you have throttle, brake, and clutch, which is also something that sets it apart from some of the competition like Moza. Even some of the Fanatec wheel ready to race bundles uh, only come with two pedals as well. So depending on what type of racing you're doing, then you know that's something that's gonna be very, very beneficial to you. But additionally, the clutch pedal can also be folded down if you don't want it in the way. So you can put that down out of the way and not have to worry about it. The brake pedal can be adjusted left and right if you want to change how that's positioned. Like right now it's sitting right in the middle of its adjustment so it could go about an inch either way, a little bit closer to the clutch or a little bit closer to the throttle. And additionally, the actual plates up here can also be moved around. There are two bolts holding them in the back you can see them here. And so those can be moved around if you wanna change the position of the pedal, get a little bit higher, a little bit lower, or a little bit you know, to the left or to the right. And while the brake is load cell and there aren't any physical adjustments for stiffness, the springs on the clutch and throttle can be adjusted with a little bit of preload, which will tighten up the spring you know, before you even press it, which will help with you know, how much resistance you want in that spring. So if you want it to feel a little bit stiffer, you can dial that down. If you want to feel a little bit looser, you can bring it all the way back up to the top and reduce that preload. As far as setup and mounting, Velocity One Race, the brake pedals come with a couple of different options. We mentioned it works on carpet. So there are these little sticky pads here and there are some flat ones. Then also these ones with the little nubs on them that are made for digging into carpet. So. If you're on carpet, put these on. If you're on hardwood, put the flat ones. And then there are also mounting points, which once again, line up directly with the Logitech Pro pedals. So very easy to get mounted on something like the Playseat Trophy Logitech G Edition. I'm glad they went with something that's already established and not some new bolt pattern that saves a lot of headaches down the road, I think. So first off, when I used this you know, entire setup, I had it set up at a desk on carpet over at my editing desk, which means I had the pedals on carpet. And for me, I had issues keeping these in place when I was pushing the brake pedal, trying to get to 100% activation. Once again, I think some other reviewers have not had that issue. So it might just be my carpet here, you know, isn't very grippy, isn't very good for that. But once again, even with some other budget wheels and pedals, I've used something behind it to block them when on carpet or on hard floor. So while it's not the end of the world, it's still not quite as grippy on carpet as like the Logitech G923. I found a little bit of movement here, uh, but once you actually put it on a sim rig, which is where I did most of my testing with it, obviously that's not an issue. A much better experience when I had this mounted. With it mounted, you know, it's a, it looks like a very substantial unit. There is a little bit of flex in the whole plastic housing uh, when you are applying a lot of force to the brake pedal. And while it's not something you necessarily notice when you are racing, looking at it, you can see the whole thing moving, which is a little bit concerning. Movement on the brake pedal is also shorter than I'm used to with other pedals like the Moza, even the uh, SRP light pedals with the brake mod that I typically use. Now that's not necessarily a bad thing, it just takes some getting used to. And there's no adjustment in here for how you know much travel you can build into here. There's also no calibration for how much force you have to apply to reach 100% uh, braking power. And that's something that we do see on like the Logitech Pro Wheel and even the Moza SRP Lite. And that's something I really appreciate being able to dial in how much force you wanna actually put down on this thing. I do think that if I had the ability to adjust that, that would help when I was on carpet. There are some tweaks to how the brake pedal works. You can basically change the uh, dead zone if you don't want it to kick in for a little while. You can also change what uh, Turtle Beach calls a sensitivity. There's low, medium and high. Low basically turns it on into like an on and off switch where it doesn't pick up signal until you're nearly fully pressed down on the pedal. 
high seemed to be the most linear and was what I used it on pretty much all the time. I felt like it built up more gradually from not being pressed to fully compressed. So with it set to high, with it mounted on my sim rig, playing Forza Motorsport with ABS turned off, which is how I usually play, I really didn't have any issues threshold breaking. So, you know, getting right on the edge of lockup or even going into lockup just a little bit and then modulating a little bit around that while I was racing. So I'd love to see a little bit more ability to tweak some of the settings with the brake pedals, but overall, I think they worked really well. Love to see a load cell pedal in here. So now, lastly, Let's chat about the button box. Button boxes aren't anything new to sim racing and usually they're add-ons. It's something you can buy if you wanna, you know, make your sim rig a little bit more elaborate. And while, you know, in theory, it looks pretty cool with all the different variety of knobs and buttons and switches, in reality, the actual, you know, functionality of it isn't quite living up to the expectations. Mounting it is super simple. Like we mentioned, they're just the two bolts, but it's not very confidence inspiring. There is a lot of flex in the actual bracket here. When you are using it on a sim rig, anytime you push a button, the whole thing is flexing and moving. It doesn't really give you know a premium or even that great of a feel. I don't know if it's just as simple as making a beefier bracket or changing how it mounts, but making that so it reduces the flex in there would be very, very beneficial for this unit, I think. And then we have engine start and we have off. And I don't think either of these are mappable. This will turn on the entire unit. This will turn off the entire unit. So, you know, no matter what you're doing, if you're in the middle of a race and trying to hit a button and accidentally fat finger it, if you touch this button, which is very easy to press, it will kill power to the whole thing. So definitely something to keep in mind. Uh, maybe like to be able to turn that off and move the power to the power button that's on the side of the unit instead. Uh, but that's how that's built out. Got a couple rotary knobs here if you want to map those to something. Four individual buttons and then these three-way switches at the bottom which only give an output when they are put into the top position. If it's in the top position, moving it back down to middle does nothing. Moving it to the bottom does nothing. Moving it back to middle does nothing. It's only when you go up to the top that it actually sends a signal. And the way you can tell that is when you have this powered on and that hooked up, anytime there is an input from one of the buttons, it flashes up here in the top left so you can tell what button is being pressed. It makes it a little bit easier to map those individual buttons. And it only sends a signal when it gets pushed all the way up to the top. So cool idea, maybe with the three-way switch, we'd love to see a little bit more functionality built in there, ability to map a few more things to it. Um, I'm not totally sure, or just turn it into a two-way switch, but then also, you know, turn something off when you go back down. So it's really cool in theory, and maybe looks really cool and exciting when you see it on the box in the store, but in practice, actually in use, this, this just makes it feel a little bit more like a gimmick than it does a super well thought out executed button box. Okay, so we've covered all the individual pieces. Now let's chat about the entire thing in use. It works for both Xbox and PC, and one of the best things here is that it's very easy to get set up and using. There is a Turtle Beach Velocity Tuner app that you can use to make adjustments through your PC or even your Xbox. You can use a mobile device. We can also do everything directly on the wheelbase, which I think is a huge benefit here. I tried it out on my Xbox Series X with this Philips Momentum 55 inch TV monitor and it works, but I spent most of my time on PC because with that system, it just had a little bit more noticeable input lag. You know, I've spent a good amount of time playing on the PC, so it was something I noticed when I hopped over there to Xbox. Now, I don't think that's because of this. I think that's just the nature of Xbox through a larger display like that. I've even noticed that on the Logitech Pro Wheel and Pedal. So that's not a knock against Turtle Beach and the Velocity One race, but just the nature of playing on Xbox. One of the most notable downsides though of this entire thing when it's set up is that rattle in the quick connect in the stem in here. When there are big changes in force feedback, 
it's just very loud, very distracting, and doesn't give, I'm sure, the premium feel and sound that Turtle Beach was hoping for with this unit. But moving on to force feedback, 7.2 newton meters of torque feels substantial in most racing games. There is a lot of potential here. Additionally, in terms of feedback detail at lower speeds, Velocity 1 Race is definitely an upgrade over other entry-level wheel and pedal setups like the G923 and T300, but the feedback did have some issues. I found it to be a little bit slower and muddy at the top than the Moza wheelbases that I have been using. And that may be to a lack of controls and customizability for the force feedback. There are some adjustments you can make in the RMD display diving in. There's a menu called K drive where you can adjust the overall strength. You can adjust the center spring and you can adjust the damping but that's it. There's nothing else you can do in there. And there are three different presets, low, medium, and high, or you can set a custom figure for any one of those. It's you know great to have some adjustability in there, but even more entry-level Moza wheelbases have a lot more parameters you can tweak to dial in the force feedback and get it where you want it for different racing games and just how you like to drive. So once again, there's a lot of potential there, but it does need some tweaks. Moving on to my overall experience in Forza Motorsport, in situations where I had to let go of the wheel, I would get wheel isolation, which I also get with even higher end Moza wheels, but the back and forth movement was much slower, which was surprising. It was acting more like a non-DD wheelbase. It seems like overall the speed of the wheel is less than I was expecting given that it's direct drive and that 7.2 newton meters of torque. Maybe that can be adjusted with firmware updates, but in its current state, I was a little disappointed. Additionally, in Forza Motorsport, on longer high-speed turns, it felt like the wheel lost all feeling like it was just maxed out and moving the wheel in or out wouldn't change the feeling of the force at all in the wheel. It felt pretty numb at those extremes. And a similar thing happened in ACC. At lower speeds, there was lots of detail and feedback, but as soon as the wheel reached a higher end, maybe 75% or more in the little force feedback reading in the bottom right of the screen, it just became flat without any detail. And in my playback, I can see that the game was hitting the peak, it was hitting red, even of what it can put out. But even then, it was just hitting it for a short time and then falling off, where there should be a little bit more detail in there, but the wheel didn't reflect any of that change in detail on the track. I also tried drifting in a Soto Corsa and it works well. I turned down the strength, turned up the dampening, and found a spot that I liked for this wheel. But once again, that loud rattling sound detracted from the overall experience and really quick transitions. And in my experience, the D-shaped wheel isn't the most ideal thing here either. So wrapping up here, you know, this has a lot of potential and the biggest selling point is that it has everything you need right out of the box for both Xbox and PC and you'll be able to find it and pick it up very easily. Outside of the sim racing world, you know, Turtle Beach is much more well known than brands like Moza and even Fanatec or Thrustmaster. So there is some kind of name brand buying power behind that as well. And that might be very attractive to newer racers, especially those who are on console. And it's great to see Turtle Beach entering the sim racing market. Well, any more competition is good here as it'll drive more innovation, drive lower prices, and we just love to see more products available in this ever expanding world. And it's great to see that Turtle Beach is coming out big with some big swings, but I do think there also need to be some big changes to this overall experience. Many of those can be made with software, like adding more force feedback, uh, customizability with the wheelbase, adding maybe a little bit, you know, of calibration with the brake pedal, a little bit more control in that. But there also may be some underlying quality control issues like the cross-threaded bolt or whatever the loose rattling stem thing is going on here with the actual wheelbase. But even with those things, I am excited to see more of what's to come from Turtle Beach in the sim racing world. There's a lot of extra stuff here that I don't think is necessary for sim racers, especially more entry level. So maybe things could be stripped down here, simplified, and also made a little bit more affordable. I think that would also make it hit a pretty nice point in the market. So I'm hoping that they, you know, take what they've learned from this product, refine it, and come out with a lot more options. I wanna see this ecosystem grow, see shifters, see handbrakes, see a lot more wheels available, maybe some better or upgraded button boxes as well. But when it comes down to it, me personally, if I were buying something in this kind of price bracket right now, 
it would not be the Velocity One race. If you need to be on Xbox, there are some ready to race bundles from Fanatec that are both a little bit cheaper and a little bit more expensive depending on how much force you actually want and what your budget allows. But I also recommend some of the Moza bundles as well. The R5 is coming in at $460. The R3 is $400 and hopefully actually becomes available here pretty soon. If you wanna see those reviews, I'll have them linked in the description or you can check up here in the cards as well. But that's gonna do it for our review of the Turtle Beach Velocity One race. Let me know what you think about it down in the comments below. If you wanna see me using this or some other sim gear live, join me on Wednesday evenings, usually around 8 p.m. Eastern, usually playing some Forza Motorsport, just hanging out and talking about gear. And if you're looking for some other videos to watch, I'll link to our review of the R5 bundle, as well as our most recent video. And thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up so others can find it easier and consider subscribing. This is Jordan with 9to5toys. to